Diane Hendricks and welcome to Fresh to Frozen and Back. This show is going to make your life easier. In each episode, I'll show you how to prepare delicious and healthy dishes, how to freeze them properly, and then bring them back to the table at a later date. This episode is all about food boards. I'm sure you've seen cheese and meat boards, dessert boards, they're kind of all the rage right now, but it's so easy to do it yourself at home. So I wanted to show you some of my favorite boards. So we're gonna start with a lox and bagel board. And the key is to choose whatever you wanna serve it on. I like um, cutting boards and wood boards. I also have slate here. Whatever you have at home, you can use ceramic boards or anything that you like, platters, but it's just such an easy way to present your food and make it more fun and exciting. So this is actually a uh, board that I got from, believe it or not, from a flea market. I love it and I always use this for my locks board. I love the way it looks and it's really great. It's also good for like a raw bar board. So what I'll do is I'll put like, I'll shuck some clams and put some shuck clams on the half shell with some cooked shrimp, some cocktail sauce. That's another idea that you can do. So for this one, I'm doing lox and bagels. I love it. It's great for Sunday, anytime. If you have a couple people over, you just break out a nice either or even just any old plain cutting boards that you have and then it's just a really beautiful way to present it okay so the first thing is when you're doing a board you want to think of a couple of things you want to think of like leveling like some things a little higher than others I'm not a big one for lining everything up in a perfect straight line. Maybe mess up something, pile things. And also when you have colors, like if you have, you know, two red things next to each other, you don't want that. So if you have like strawberries and tomatoes, which you probably wouldn't have on the same board, but if you had strawberries and tomatoes, you would put, or peppers, let's say a red bell pepper and tomatoes. Put the red bell pepper on one side and the tomatoes on the other. So break up the color, add some levels, and these it. It's always fun to do a theme. So you can do any type of theme that you want. You could even do like a s'mores board. So there's the possibilities are endless. So simple enough with the locks and bagel board. So here's the, the things that I love and my family loves on locks and bagels. So the one thing is we, I always put a little bit of butter because you're serving bagels and people like butter on their bagels. So some butter and some cream cheese. So I have these in a little bit of a taller glass. So I'm gonna kind of put these on opposite ends of the board. Then I have some sliced tomatoes. So you just slice your tomatoes nice and thin and I like to fan them out. So instead of going straight, maybe I'll kind of curl them this way. And some sliced red onion. I love red onion on um, my lox and bagels. Now instead of lining them up like this because there's not a chance that anyone's going to take this whole thing. So what I like to do is kind of break up the onion so that when you grab it, you're not grabbing the entire onion. So you're only grabbing like a piece. So I'll do the onion in kind of like a little pile like that. I love that. And then lemon. You can't have a lox and bagels, I can't, without lemon. So what I'm going to do is kind of scatter the lemon throughout so that your guests can just grab one from anywhere they see them. So I'll move this in and maybe put two over here, maybe pile them on top of each other and then kind of stick maybe one right here, these two right here. And then we'll kind of build around that. We've got the onion, the tomato, the lemon, the butter, and the cream cheese. Now, I also like cucumber on my lox and bagel platter. I like it because it gives it a nice crunch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of pile that. So obviously your hands are washed first. So I'm gonna take my cucumber and put it in like a little bit of a, almost like a little triangle and then do the same thing. You want to be able to make sure that your guests can grab things very easily. And that's why we're going to put some tongs on there too. So this is going to give it a little height in that corner. So we're going to do that with the cucumber. Capers. My family, we can't have lox and bagels without capers. It is so like essential. So what I'll take is like a cute little ramekin and then put these capers in there. 
and it looks really pretty. Maybe I'll nestle that over by the lemon. And what I'll do is I'll take little spoons. So you want a little spoon so that your guests can grab whatever they're, you know, whatever they want. They want to have a spoon. And here's like a little spreading knife that you'll I'll stick right into the butter and into the cream cheese. Um, black pepper, absolutely necessary when it comes to lox and bagels. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of set that on the side. Now last but definitely not least, we're gonna do the lox, the smoked salmon. You can do smoked trout, whiting, whatever you like. So what I like to do is take the uh, lox and what I'll do is I'll pick up the pieces because they're already sliced. When you buy them, you can buy them, you buy them pre-sliced. So what I'll do is I'll take them and I'll kind of just roll them. So then when someone takes it on their plate, they can undo it and, and uh, put it on top of their bagel. So here's another slice. So I'm gonna take that and I'm just gonna roll it. And then just kind of pile them next to each other because we're gonna use tongs to get them out. So your guests can just kind of grab them with the tongs. So I'll finish this off. I'll never forget when we were kids, me and my two sisters, my family loved um, locks. And uh, it was so funny because we were like, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 years old, and we had grown up eating lox, but it was kind of like a delicacy at the time. So we'd have our company over and it would be so funny. I'll never forget the first time because my mother never said, don't eat all the lox. So my sister, my sisters and I, when the platter came out, we cleaned out like three quarters of the lox before anybody even got to the table. So we learned our lesson to be a little bit, uh, come back for seconds and make sure everybody gets their lox. It was really funny. My Aunt Shirley got really mad, but that's okay. We were little. Okay, so I'm gonna roll this up as well, and it looks so pretty. And I'm gonna do two more, and that's, and the bagels, we'll set the bagels onto another platter. Now, I wanna kinda make sure they're all the same. Now, what you can do with the, any leftover locks, which is absolutely delicious, put it in a food processor with some cream cheese and a little bit of milk and just blend it up and that's how you make lox, that's how I make lox cream cheese. And it's as simple as that. You just take the lox, blend it in the food processor with some cream cheese, use a little milk to thin it out, but don't thin it out too much. Now this makes such a nice presentation. So I'll take this black pepper and just put it right on top of the lox, this really coarsely ground. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. And then when you serve it, you're just gonna serve it like this. And you're gonna take your, oh, and I have a little bit of any fresh herbs that you have. Here's some fresh thyme that I had from my garden. That always looks pretty, so I'm gonna kinda set that right there. And then for the bagels, I'll just take another cutting board and just kinda lay the bagels across the cutting board. And then you just serve the bagels with the black pepper next to the lox, and there's your beautiful lox platter. When we come back, I'm going to show you a pancake board that is so simple and everybody will love. Hi, I'm Diane Hendricks, and today I want to share with you one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. It's my bench scraper. It's also a pastry cutter. I've sold out of this on my website and have been selling it for a few years. It is so indispensable. What I love about this one in particular is that it's longer. This is the typical size of one of these. It's longer. It's made of high quality steel. It's made in America, which is great. And I just love it. If you don't have one of these in your kitchen, you're really missing out. It is so versatile. It's great for baking, chopping, gathering all your ingredients together, keeping your work surface neat and getting things from one place to the other, especially from the cutting board, the clippings to the garbage can. It helps you work with your dough and the possibilities are endless. So check it out, dianehendricks.com. $19, mention Fresh to Frozen and Back and you'll get 10% off. You gotta get it. Good food done right. Okay, now we're gonna make a pancake board. It's really fun and it looks so pretty and everybody loves it, especially the kids. So we just gotta pick a board. So I'm gonna choose this one to start and I may need another one. So I'm gonna start right with this cutting board and the first thing I'm gonna put on is the pancakes. So what I have here are little silver dollar pancakes that I made and what you can do is you can make them ahead of time if you'd like and then you can just put them, um, if you want to, you can just stick them in the oven for a few minutes so they're nice and warm. 
and it's as easy as that. Then you're just going to lay them here because they it's really nice. You can make little sandwiches with them. Little, uh, wait till you see the toppings and things that we have. Right now I know I'm gonna need two boards here. So we've got this. We've got some nice pancakes that are already made. Little silver dollar guys. It looks kind of cute. Turn it around. Now what I'm gonna add is I have some bacon. Everybody loves bacon. So I'm just gonna kind of like lay some bacon in here. That looks good. And what else is gonna go on this part? Okay, let's do the bananas here. So what I like to, oh, I still have my saran wrap on my banana, just to show you. Um, these bananas are brown on the outside, but they're so beautiful on the inside. These are two weeks old. So bananas give off of gas that um, helps it, that makes things ripen. So if you put either a piece of saran wrap or a piece of aluminum foil, first of all, you break them apart because when they're bunched together, they're gonna ripen each other faster. So what I do is I break them apart, put a little piece of saran on the top or aluminum foil, and then just put them back in whatever bowl or whatever uh, vessel that I have, and I get another week out of my bananas. So um, what looks really pretty is if you do it this way, is if you put them on the board, always take off that little end because that's kind of funky and then I always like to try to get some of these strings off it doesn't matter but it looks prettier so I'll just kind of set that like that and then I'm gonna do another one as well so then we'll just peel it do the same thing see how ripe they are oh they look so good and I might as well do the third one because everybody likes bananas so then we're gonna just do this and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife and I'm just going to kind of cut little strips. Just put slices in it so that they kind of fall to the side. Just a little, oh my gosh. You can use any, and if you see one of these little guys stringy, just take it off. It doesn't matter, but it looks prettier. It's better for presentation. And if you want to use other fruits, that's fine. I have some strawberry preserves that I'm putting on here. And then just kind of spread it out just a little bit so it looks pretty. So we have that. And um, I'm also gonna be using chocolate chips. So I think I like the look of having a couple of them over here. So they can pick at it, cause you've got tongs here that we're gonna serve them with. And here's some uh, peanut butter chips. So we'll just put them like that. Now I know I need another board for what I have left here. Okay, so I'm gonna use this little guy. Cause all I have left is, I've got some Nutella which is the hazelnut, which is so yummy. I've got maple syrup, which you can put into like a nice little uh, vessel that they can pour it. And you put it right next to the pancakes so they know what it is. Some strawberry preserves. You can use any flavor that you like. With a little spoon. And we've got a little spoon for the Nutella. You can do peanut butter, almond butter, anything that you like. Um, and then we've got some blueberries that I'm gonna put in this because it's gonna give it a little bit more height. And then again, I'm gonna put some of the little chocolate chips and the peanut butter chips here. And you, again, you can add whatever you want. And that's as simple as that. So when, you, when your guests or you take it, you're gonna take one, put maybe some Nutella on it, add a little peanut butter chips, maybe a little bit of strawberry, put another lid on it, and you have yourself like a little sandwich. But this is a beautiful way for a brunch presentation or just a quick, if somebody comes over, you just do a quick batter of pancakes, make little silver dollars, and pull out whatever you have in your refrigerator. And it's as simple as that. When we come back, I'm gonna show you a meat and cheese board and a dessert board that's gonna knock your socks off. Okay, now a meat and cheese board. We've all heard of them. You can purchase them. They can get very, very expensive, but it's so simple to do at home and it's really fun. And you're showing your guests that you care. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these two boards. You can pick, like I said before, anything that you want. I also have slates, which I'm gonna do the dessert board on. It's really cool. Okay, so let's do the cheeses on here. So here I have Manchego, which I love. It's a Spanish cheese. And I'm gonna put, you sh I like to shred a little bit of these types of cheeses so that the, your guests can take them on their own. Um, I have brie. So I like to put the uh, cut side to the outside. And if I'm using two, cause this looks pretty, then your guests can kind of just grab it that way. I have Grana Padano. You can never go wrong with that. Love it. 
So I'm going to put, actually I'm going to move this brie over here so that I have some with the shred there and some with the, the shredded and cut there. So I'm going to put this here. And then I'm actually going to do the blue cheese separately. So let's do the blue cheese over here. You can actually either keep it up or you can lay it on its side. I think I'm going to lay it on its side like that. And um, that's gonna get a knife because your guests are gonna wanna like kind of grab it. So I'm gonna stick that knife in there. And we're gonna put tongs in all of this. So I have, for all of these, I like to use tongs, obviously. So we're gonna just use tongs in all of these uh, boards. And we'll just set them kind of on the side. Okay, so um, before I continue to build this board, just to show you what I do, I got these right off the internet. They're just little slates and they're so cute. And what I'll do is I'll just take the slate and they actually come with a white pen and I'll write, you know, French blue because this is a French blue cheese that's going to go with our rose blood rosé that I'm going to tell you all about in a minute, which is launching in June of 2021 with Wolfpack Wines out of Monmouth County, New Jersey. It's amazing. You're going to love it. In June of 2021, Wolfpack Worldwide will be proud to launch their newest wine to the portfolio called Roseblood from the famed Chateau d'Estublon in Fontainebleau, France, in the Beau de Provence appellation. Wolfpack Worldwide is a boutique wine importer owned and operated by Paul Favale and located in Monmouth County, New Jersey. They focus on family owned and operated estates of the finest quality. Roseblood is a gorgeous, super high quality rosé produced organically from 50% Grenache, 45% Cinso, and 5% Tiboran. Roseblood has a spectacular, luminous, pale pink color, a dazzling rosé with a distinctive mineral freshness with notes of grapefruit and lychee and gorgeous floral aromatics. Roseblood is fun, Roseblood is fresh, Roseblood is fantastic. The estate was founded in 1489. Chateau d'Estublon was built in the 17th century and they have been making fine wine and olive oil there for centuries dating back to the Roman Empire. Check out Wolfpack's portfolio at wolfpackwine.com and follow them on Instagram at wolfpackwine underscore spirits. So we have a French blue. I'm gonna put that right there and look how nice that looks. Then you know exactly what you're getting. Then we have Manchego. I'm just going to write that down. And you can use this for any board, for dessert, doesn't matter. Grana Padano. And it just makes it like personal and special. And then we'll do Brie. I don't have to write double cream, although it is, which makes it even creamier and delicious. So we'll just stick that like that. So even just that little bit right there makes such a difference. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, oh, I need to do the meats. So here I have some chorizo, which I love. And when I do my meats, I like to do it this way. I cut the, these were full pieces that I cut straight down the center. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of pile them like opposite of each other. So we're going to go this way, then we're going to go that way. And I'll make a nice big pile. And then you, the, your guests can just grab them with their tongs. You can add prosciutto. Um, I'm using soppressade, you can do pepperoni, any type of things that you like. You can put pâtés, anything, anything goes. So I'm going to do the same thing here. It looks so good. And we're just going to pile that up nice and high. So yummy. When I do prosciutto, I'll take one slice and kind of cut it in three pieces and ball it up and put little balls of prosciutto, kind of scatter it around to grab. Now it's time to make it look pretty and add more flavors. So I'm going to put, let's say I'm, I'm going to put some pile of almonds right in the middle here. Then I'm going to take a pile of, these are my homemade candied walnuts. You can find that right on my uh, website. It's like a nice little surprise when you take a bite. Now we're going to add some color. So we're going to add a little bit of raspberries to add a nice color. Looks so good. Dried cranberries and dried apricots are delicious and perfect for this. I've got some fresh from dried sliced figs, some blackberries, 
and grapes. Always add such a nice little, I have this whole big thing, so we're not gonna just put this whole thing on there. So what we're gonna, I'm gonna do is kind of break off a couple of pieces and just kind of set them on the sides here. So again, the key is to, to add a lot of color, separate similar colors, and what else you can do with grapes, which is really kind of cool, you could put them in groups of two. So if you wanna break them up and you wanna just take a minute, just make them, just break them up in groups of two so that when somebody picks one up, they actually have a little pair of two. So that's kind of nice rather than just like pulling it off of like the whole thing of grapes. So it's so simple to do that and olives. You can't, uh, I love having olives. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the olives on the side like that. And let's see, I have another board here. So let's add another board. Again, it'll make it even more special. So we have another board here. So I'm going to put these olives in this bowl and put it on a third board because then we can also add the preserves. So what I always, in my catering everywhere, I always have some type of preserves. I ha this is an apricot preserve that is so delicious um, with the crackers or the bread or whatever you're serving it with. And this is my balsamic molasses. It's like a reduction that is so good. So you can just kind of do that and then just add a little pile of grapes over here. And then you have this beautiful preparation of a meat and cheese board that's gonna blow the minds of your friends and family. What goes beautifully with this meat and cheese platter is the newest rosé on the market called Roseblood Rosé from Chateau d'Estublanc in France. It is fantastic. Roseblood, it's a gorgeous, super high quality rosé produced organically from 50% Grenache, 45% Cinso, and 5% Tiboran. It is a delicious wine. We're gonna have to try it. Oh my gosh. Look at the color. It's light and bright and delicious. Oh my gosh. It's launching in June of this year. You have to try it. It's so good. Okay, for sake of time, I put the dessert board together already for you. It's simple, whatever you have in the house or just a quick run to the store. Here I have some meringue, some Hershey Kisses, mini muffins, marshmallows, dried pineapple, any type of dried fruit is great, dried apricots, candied walnuts that I actually used on the meat and cheese board, fresh fruit, cookies, and what I love is these little pretzel sticks that you can dip in either caramel or chocolate syrup and I always like to add little individual mints in case anybody wants a little fresh breath at the end. Okay, now let's talk about freezing. Almost all this stuff freezes great. These candied walnuts are from my catering company, so if you ever need catering in the tri-state area, please look me up, diane at dianehendricks.com. Check out my website and my social media at Diane Hendricks. Um, the muffins freeze great. The meringues, uh, just about everything on this table freezes great, just put them in all airtight, freezer safe containers. When it comes to the meats and cheeses, blue cheese doesn't really freeze that great and neither does the brie. The Grana Padano freezes beautifully and so does the Manchego. All nuts can go in the freezer, it actually extends their shelf life. The meats, these were previously frozen. Very simple, stick them right in a freezer safe bag. Olives, no, oh my gosh, the uh, preserves, any type of preserves freezes great. Pancakes, perfectly. Bacon, anytime you cook bacon, cook a lot of it, freeze it, take it right out of the freezer, it's perfect. The meats, these were already frozen, and the preserves all freeze beautifully. And for this dessert platter, this Roseblood Rosé is perfect. So it's a nice after dinner dessert pairing rosé as well. So please share this episode with those that you love. Follow me on social media at, at Diane Hendricks on YouTube and Instagram, Facebook, all of that. Tune in next time and I look forward to seeing you.